then let's continue uh, with the class. So just to sum up, the la with the last time we finished talking about the social contract. So we talked about the social contract and the economic contract. But we shouldn't view the social contract as economic contract as two completely different things, right? We need to combine the two of them. So one example who combined the two of them was a US car company, Chrysler. So they decided to copy the Japanese system. Before they had a system where they just uh, made the uh, they just made the price competition between their suppliers, right? They have the suppliers, so they just made the price competition. Do you understand the price competition? Yes. Your price is the best, I'll choose you. But they realized that the Japanese system for Toyota was working very well, so they decided to copy the Japanese system. So they, they, they had a possible 2,400 suppliers, right, possibly. They cut the list down to 140 suppliers. Okay, they chose these suppliers, and they decided not to worry about the price anymore, but to work with the suppliers. So they changed the contract from two years to four years. Okay, the average contract was two years, they changed to four years. Okay, they decided to help their suppliers. They visited their suppliers. Okay, before, so they visited the suppliers factory with their engineers, showed them what to do, upskill the supplier. Okay? Before they were just worried about the price, the time, and the quality. Okay? Just test these things of the supplier. But now they are more concerned about their supplier's business, getting involved, right? Now they're getting involved in the business, helping them to cut costs. Do you understand? They're helping to cut costs. And they also ask the suppliers to help them. Maybe the supplier can help Chrysler to cut costs. So the supplier can visit my company and help me to cut costs. So can you understand this kind of relationship? Yes. So they still make the contract, the economic contract, but longer time. They still have the contract about sharing the technology, sharing the know-how, sharing the information. So when Chrysler made this system, they found that they reduced the cost by 20%. Okay? So they reduced the cost of making the cars a lot, and they were able to make more profit by using that kind of combining the social contract and the economic contract together in that kind of system. So they protect their participatory. Sorry? They're, they protect their, their participatory. Yes. Because they're visiting their supplier's factory, right? They're helping them to improve the quality and helping them to improve other things. Helping the supplier to cut cost. If I help the supplier to cut cost, they can sell me the product at a cheaper price. Okay? But also the suppliers can help them <coughs> cut costs. The supplier comes to my factory and tells me, oh, you can do this better or you can do this better. So we're sharing, making a relationship. So they are able to cut the cost instead of just making the suppliers compete against each other. It's more an American culture. You should compete. And then the winner is just better because they have some competition, right? If you don't have competition, you're not going to do well. That's the way Americans think usually, right? Whereas Asian thinking is more cooperation than competition. So the Americans compete the Asian thinking in this case, right? So, and then the last time we just started talking about the cross-cultural negotiation and I gave you some homework yes. about gap analysis, which maybe is why there are some students missing today. <laughs> right? Maybe I learned a lesson. Don't give homework, then <laughs> students don't be missing in the next class when they're supposed to do the homework, talk about the homework result, right? I think so. My country and Korea. Okay, so come over here and tell us. So I check I liking those. Mm. So you can use the marker, it's easier to explain. So come up onto the stage and tell us about your gap analysis. Uh, I, my question is we we uh, we reference the pipe. Just tell us, all I want you to do is tell me about the gap analysis between your country and the other country, right? 
We have the 10 question, we had the questionnaire in the last class, and we talked about using the Gert Hofstede, uh, Gert, Gert Hofstede website. Okay, so the last class we looked at the Gert Hofstede website about culture, and we did use this, I asked you to use this cultural tool for comparing the countries. What's your country you did? Austria. Austria, so we have we have here South Korea and Austria, right? Austria is a couple of those places. Okay. Thank you for letting me know that. A. So this was South Korea and Austria. And then what are we comparing on? We're trying to put the cultural differences onto the values sheet, right? That we we have on the course in Coursera. So we looked at the week two. Right? And we had this assess your negotiating style we looked at in the computer room the last time, right? Yes. So can you come up here and tell us? So it's easier to come on the stage and face the students, right? You can use the marker if you want to explain. What is the gap that you identified? Not everything, just some things. What's the gap? Do you understand gap? Gap is the difference between you and the Austrian if you're going to negotiate with somebody in Austria. You can ask me to show this graph or this one as you want. Based on the contract. Yes. Okay. Uh, and how this test is, Austria is the 11 point and South Korea is the 16. Yes. This means uh, uh, Austria is the more equality and South yes. Korea is the. Uh, this means Korea is the more formal and South uh, Austria is the is informal. Okay. Uncertainty avoidance means uh, Austria is the 70 and Korea is the 85. This means Korea is the more adventure. And Uncertainty avoidance means we are avoiding uh, risk. Avoiding. Uh, yeah, this means the Austria is the more ad adventure and Korea yes. is the don't want adventure. Yes. Not that big of a difference, right? 1785 is not too big of a difference, it's a slight difference. Just a big difference. This one is a big difference. This, this, this one. These ones are big differences, right? Yes. This, this means the Austria is the world of power, power map. If Austria is the world of like manpower. Masculinity? Yes. Uh, so. A high score shows that the society is driven by competition, achievement, and success. Males are more, in the old days, males, or if you look at the Nature Discovery Channel, the male of the species is fighting over the woman, right? So the society is more driven by competi competition, achievement, and success, with success being defined as win or loser. But more feminine means that we are more worried about caring for others and quality of life. Okay? This is the Austria is the more the win lose contract. Yes, more win lose situation. So it's going to be here attitudes. Maybe they're going to be more win lose, and you're going to be more win win, right? Like we can see in this with the suppliers, right? The Toyota is more win win with their suppliers. The American company was more win lose with their suppliers. Okay. 
So you're going to be more looking for a win-win agreement, whereas the Austrian person might be more focused on a win-win -win agreement. Okay, is it important to know that before you start the negotiation? Yes. Right. Anything else? Finalist in this indulgence. Yes. This demonstrates the more more than Korean. Yes. So they're more selfish than Koreans. Right. Indulgence. How do people try to control their desires and import impulses? So Korean people try to control their desire and impulse, right? I want this, but I control myself. In Austria, I want this, I'm going to have it. Okay, don't control themselves as much. So what does that mean? We're doing a on this. Yeah. What about emotionalism? Who is more more going to try and hide their feelings and who's going to show their feelings? Austria is the more high high feeling and South Korea is the low low emotion. So Austria is low emotion, you're saying? Uh, Austria is high. Yes, so Austria is not going to control themselves as much, right? But Koreans will be more controlled in comp of their should be hiding their feeling. It's going to be hard to see what the Korean person is feeling or Right? They're controlling their uh, impulses. Okay? Um, also, again, on the win win, similar one. So, we have risk taking. So, thank you. So, we get the idea of the gap between Austria and Korea. So, the point is that you're negotiating with the Austrian person. You figure out the gaps before you start the negotiation. Then, when you negotiate with the Austrian person, you can understand them better. Right? Yes. You know they're going to be pushing you more for the win lose. Right? You know they're going to be maybe uh, asking for things more directly or saying without controlling their feeling much, right? Or impulsive. So you have to be ready, just prepared for that kind of negotiation style. Okay? So which country did you do? Netherlands. Netherlands are very similar to Austria, so we don't need to do that one. Which country did you do? China. China. We're going to talk about it as a case study later in the class, right? Uh, what country did you do? US. The US. Okay, so we can hear your. What do you come? I'm from Austria to the US. So the United States is the green line, Austria is still there. So you can see the United States is similar to Austria in some things, right? But different in other things. Right? So what gaps can you identify between Korea and the United States? Korea 18, US 91. Yes, it is pretty, pretty higher than Korea. So they focus on themselves more than others. They think of I, and Korea, you think of we, right? Yes. So what does that mean on this checklist? Which number? You tell me. Uh, I'm asking you, what does that mean? <laughs> Individualism going to affect. The goal is it going to affect the goal? Is it going to affect the attitude? If somebody is more individualistic, is that going to affect their attitude? What do you think? Their attitude is going to be more win-lose or win-win? Win-win. Oh, win-lose. Win-lose, win win right? So again, the American might be more aggressive. 
to understand aggressive? Yes. Just thinking more about themselves. Okay? What about the goal? Relationship or contract? I don't I, I only care about me. Right? I'm not interested in the relationship. Okay? So what other differences are there then? in Austria, right? So what does that mean? Win -lose. Uh... Maybe more win-lose, right? Because win-win, we want to keep the relationship for a long time, right? You win and I win, so we can keep a good relationship. But if we're not interested in the longer-term relationship, we could go win-lose, okay? And again, number one, right? Goal. Contract or relationship. They're going to be more interested in the contract, right? So next one. Any other gaps between Korea and the US? Uncertainty avoidance. Uncertainty avoidance? Who is, likes risk? America um, prefer to be risky than Korea. Mm -hmm. So what difference is that going to make? Number 10, right? Risk taking. Number 10 is specific about risk taking, okay? So Americans high risk taking, you're low risk taking. Okay? Anything else? Power distance. Power distance, yes. Power distance in the US higher than Austria. Not that as big a difference, right? But well, anyway, which is going to be more formal, Korea or US? Korea is over the Okay, so thank you. Okay. Are you ready to negotiate with an American? Right, at least you can understand about their difference between your style and their style. That's the difference between Korea and the US, but you did your own style, right? Were you like a normal Korean style, or were you different? Were you more like American style? So you, sh you shouldn't be comparing to Korean style, really, right? You're really comparing to your own style. What do you think? Was your own style more like American or more like Korean? Half half. Half half. Okay, so what country did you choose? Australia. Australia. Canada. Canada, so quite similar. The US, right? We're going to see quite similar. If we put them on the graph here, we'll see a similar Canada. Australia, quite similar, right? Canada and Australia, very similar culture. The United States, English speaking countries, British Anglo Saxon culture. You understand Anglo Saxon? Yes. Conquered by the British. <laughs> Do we need to get you guys to come up here and present about Australia and Canada? Do we need you to present about Australia and Canada? <laughs> No. You can if you want, but it's going to be the same, very similar to the US, right? So that makes it a little bit easier. Some countries are quite similar, especially Canada and the US, right? Australia, maybe a little bit different. The UK is also going to be included in this group, right? Ireland might be similar enough. Some things might be a little bit different, UK and Ireland. But we had the British Empire, right? British Empire. So the history effects we're going to talk about with China also affects the country's culture, right? Yes. So, uh, do you have any questions about doing the gap analysis? Do you think you can do that if you're going to negotiate with somebody from Slovenia or Finland or Russia? You can make a gap analysis? Yes. Right? 
will help you to understand. Okay, next question then. Now that we found out the negotiating style of the other side, should you adopt the negotiation style of the other side? Should you also be like American, be very aggressive and win-lose situation, right? And very, very informal. Should you also be informal? Come to the negotiation in jeans and a t-shirt. Hey! <laughs> hey, John! <laughs> what? What's up, man? What's up, man? <laughs> Everything's cool. cool. I'm cool. Uh, right? What do you think? Should you <coughs> adopt the negotiation style of the other side? Like the old phrase, when you're in Rome, act as the Romans do. Have you heard that phrase before? Yes. Right, so what do you think? Discuss with your partner. Should you try to use the style of the other side? Keep your own style. Or how much? Kim Sok Young, what do you think? You're going to Australia. Are you going? You, you studied about the style of Australia. Are you going to change to the Australian style when you go to Australia, or not? Keep your Korean style. to respect and accept the fact they're different, right? But are you going to change your style? Australian style. Don't change your style to the other countries. So the answer is that moderate adaptation is better than major adaptation. Do you understand moderate? Just a small change. Don't do a big change. Try to identify some key feature of the other culture. Some clear taboos that you want to avoid. Do you understand taboo? Taboo is something that you shouldn't do, like touching the person or that kind of thing, right? So just find some things that you shouldn't do. Clear. What's the clear? Clear taboos means it's obvious that you studied about that country and shouldn't do that thing. Okay? So, for example, in Korea, I shouldn't call you by your first name when we meet. Right? That would be a taboo. Or I, should I touch you on the head in Korea? Touch you on the head? Hmm? Maybe that's my culture. 
I pat you on the head and say good job <laughs> to the student. Uh -huh. Can I do that in Korea? Uh -huh. hmm? Why not? Shy, shy, shy. Yeah, it's a taboo in Korea. Do you understand taboo? Yes. Something you don't do in Korea. How would you feel if I pat you on the head now? <laughs> after you answer the question correctly? <laughs> shy, shy, shy. Are you going to complain to the university? <laughs> <laughs> so, <coughs> you have to try to avoid the taboo. But don't try to completely immerse, immerse yourself in the other side's style. <coughs> There's problems when you try to modify your behavior and act as the other side does. For example, what happens if you do the American style, right? And then they try to do the Korean style. So they have the story of the American man and the Japanese businessman. In Japan you should bow, in America shake hands, right? So the American guy went to bow and the Japanese guy went to shake hands, right? So the American guy's head hit the Japanese guy's hand. Because they both changed, right? So if we, if, if it doesn't make sense. If I change my style to the other side and they change their style to my side, then I'm doing negotiation in their style and they're doing negotiation in my style, right? It wouldn't make sense. Could look silly. Okay? So we just change our style a small bit and check out, find some taboos that we shouldn't do in the other country. I guess it's, it's easier for you guys to go to the US because they're more informal, so they don't have as many taboos. But you would have more taboos in Korea, so it's harder for the Western person to come to Korea, right? To negotiate. <clears throat> so here's a question. Have I violated any cultural taboos? So, this is a normal thing in Ireland. We finish our negotiation, I tap the table, right? And then I pat you on the back with my left hand, and I say, great job. What do you think? Discuss with your partner. How do you think I could violate cultural taboo in a country by doing this? So the touching could be a problem. In some countries you don't touch anybody, right? In other countries you don't touch somebody with your left hand, your toilet hand, that is taboo. So we have to re respect the other person's culture, okay? Do you understand the difference between cultural elective and cultural imperative? Cultural elective means I can do that if I want, but I don't have to do that, okay? And cultural imperative means I have to do that, or like taboo, I better not do that. Okay, so can you give me, we just looked at the cultural imperative in Korea, don't touch people on the head, right? 
What, what else is an imperative in Korea? Uh, we shouldn't do it in Korea. Uh, Thank you. 